Welcome to another program in the Universal Energy series. My guest today is Neil Sutton and before we introduce and go further let me just say about the program. We'll be just discussing his new book, his latest book, briefly talking about the first book that he published, about his life, his everyday life and his spiritual life. We'll be talking about uh, why he published a book, what made him publish it, the first and second book, and also where, when and how you can get hold of a copy. So without further ado, let me introduce Mr Neil Sutton. Hi Rob, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Good. And it's a pleasure to interview you again. So, let me first start, and uh, let's talk about your life. Ooh. Yes, I know you've had a very interesting and varied life. Interesting, yes. But uh, your spiritual life and your uh, everyday life, how does that combine and work together? Very well. I mean, there is a pull both ways because I have to go to work, mm. you know, uh, and do a, a full-time job and I do the spiritual stuff as well. And sometimes I'm pulled two ways and the spiritual stuff always seems to, to win out and mm. win over because I feel that's more of a pull and a, and a calling than... Right, yeah. Than, than, you know, work is necessary to earn pennies oh, to yes. live this oh, life. Oh, I know. We all have to keep the roof over yeah, our heads. Absolutely. absolutely. Some have yeah. holes in it, but there you go. <laughs> Patches, that's the thing, patches. Yeah. 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 So, um, my, my spiritual life started at a very early age when I was oh, eight or nine. I was on my way to school and I was running like you would not believe. And uh, I saw, the funniest thing, I saw a worm in a puddle. And I stopped immediately, picked up a twig, got this worm. Well, even though I was very late for school, I <laughs> picked up this worm and put it on the side of, you know, in some dirt and some grass and, and I carried on running and there on the ground in front of me was a big shiny two shilling piece you can remember what two yeah, shilling yeah. pieces were oh, and I well, my dad told me about that <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two shilling. I picked up this two shilling piece and I thought oh is it reward oh it's probably reward so and I ran to school and we had a very very interesting um RE it was called then religious yeah. education yeah, that's right. and then religious knowledge and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, a dear old lady called Mrs. Parker, who was a well-travelled and well-versed lady, she taught a bit from the Bible, but she was more into spirituality and, and, you know, and the way you live your life from your heart and this sort of thing. And I told her of my experience, how I'd rescued this worm and how I found this two shilling piece and I said, is it a reward, do you think, from, you know, above? And she said, what do you think it is? And I said, well, I don't know, I think it's probably well, it's making me think, I said. And she said, then the purpose is served. Well, that's right. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, it's making me think about, you know, looking after animals, looking after things, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the way the heart should develop in life. And, and that has always stayed with me, and that set me on the path. And, and before very long, I mean, my brother used to go fishing, and I used to get dragged along with him, my big brother. And he'd take fish out of the water and pop them on the back or a net on the side and I, and I would see them gasping for air and I just want to pick them up and throw them back you know I used to see animals on television in cages and I used to, my heart used to bleed for them and that's how it all started and I knew about religion and uh, the bible and that sort of thing but I just couldn't reconcile myself to it mm. I just couldn't reconcile myself to this vengeful God and, and the subservience and all that and the idea of hell just didn't click with me, I, I couldn't understand that anything that could create creatures, you know, dogs, all sorts of animals, foxes, everything that could give out so much love, the ooze love, it could be controlled by this vengeful God of the Bible that had this huge place where we could go, or would go, if we stepped out of line. And, uh, you know, because then according to the Bible, it's one shot at life, one shot at being good, and then into the furnace you go if you haven't, you know, if you if you fell short of what he he would expect. Um, yeah, it's a fear aspect. Yeah, and I, 
as I got older, I came to realise that it was a control mechanism, that the, the church, religion is a control mechanism, they all are. And it's all about controlling you through fear, and it's a fear of what they say will happen to you when you die. And of course, the more I thought about it, and, and the more I got into spirituality, the more stuff that kept coming into my head, and I kept, you know, I could dream things, and I could go and sit in a forest or I'd, I'd find myself wandering into the countryside just sitting against a tree and thinking about all these stuff and all these answers kept coming to me and I thought that's the truth yes that's the truth um, and that's how it all that's how it all came about and that's how it all came into me writing the book buried by the church because I had this compulsion to investigate various religions to find out what they all thought, what their ideas were, because they're all kind of different in many ways. Many ways of worship, many ways, many things you could do, couldn't do. Can't eat pork on Friday, can't do this, can't do that. Prema has to face north, you know. Um, and I thought, what's it all about? So I studied them all. And, and I went back through the history books from way, way back. And the more I delved, the more I found out about the ancient Egyptians, the more I found out about the real life of Jesus Christ and and his wife, Mary Magdalene, and it all started to fall into place. Mm -hmm. It all started to fall into place. And that he was a deeply, deeply, deeply spiritual person, as was Mary, um, and the Essenes, and all those around him. But it, his life and work was all hijacked by the emerging Church of Rome in 325 AD. We all know about the Council of Nicaea, yeah. uh, where the Bible was put together. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's a pack of untruths. It really is a pack of untruths. Um, I know I'll probably upset one or two people by saying no, no, that, no. but it really, well, really I, is. Well, I just have to say that, uh, uh, that yeah, that's, that's uh, a, a, another perspective of a thing. And it's given uh, uh, the listeners, the viewers, uh, tools to, to go to wherever and research and find mm. out for yourself. And we do it with great respect to anyone else mm -hmm. who happens to believe differently. And I'm not saying that uh, I believe anything along those lines. I believe that uh, your beliefs are your understandings. But no, don't let anybody dictate to you about them. Go and find out for yourself. So anyway, so uh, before I ask you anything else, Neil, you, you do make me laugh because <laughs> when we were sitting here before, Yes. Mr. Sutton said to me, I don't know what, if I'm going to say anything, I've dried up. <laughs> so for someone who dried up, it's done very, very well. Anyway, joking aside. <laughs> okay. So we've got to the, uh, the first book, Buried by the Church. Mm -hmm. You've told us what your um, inclination was to start the research there for the book. Mm -hmm. It must have taken you quite a while to research such a, a meaty book. It did. It took several years of research and digging deep and hitting brick walls, right. you know, on, on the real life of Jesus Christ and finding the proper papers and and searching through professors and uh, and obviously books that have been published. I mean, Elaine Pagels um, wrote a marvelous book, the title of which has just flown from my head. Um, that was a funny title. Think, yeah, the something gospels, I think it was called. But anyway, Elaine Pagels, look her up, and, and the book will come to you. I'm sure. Um, Holy Blood and the Holy Grail yeah, yeah. was a good book, that slightly out in some cases, I think. Um, but the more information I got, the more this huge jigsaw seemed to be piecing together. And even when there was a gap, you know, if you look at the bits around it, you could probably fill it in, you know. Um, mm. um, and, and so, yes, it all, it all did came, come together, but it took several years. Uh, and then I had to write it. And then I had to get it published, which wasn't easy because none of the major publishers would touch it because it was too controversial um, and it flew in the face of church and state, I suppose. So mm. yeah, we, we couldn't get it published. I years. think it's a shame when those, uh, these sort of things happen. More is the publishers are more aware now mm. of a situation whereby uh, they treat it as though, uh, and it should be, the, the interpretation of the book is the person, the interpretation of the person who uh, wrote it in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, but to put it on sale for the general public is a different uh, thing altogether because at this moment they have to, the same as we do, we have to respect everybody. 
So that's why there's a... Yeah, but the whole run back, that's, that's repression, isn't it? That's, that's, yes, it everybody is. Everybody should be free, like in your um, get-togethers and your, your um, spiritual centre, mm-hmm. all are welcome, all people, all beliefs mm-hmm. you know, are welcome, and they all have their say and they all do their thing. Um, but this, this is suppression through fear. Yeah, there's an awful lot about that, and you and I have uh, walked the same road, very much alike, because we're both quite radical in what we say and what we do. Yeah, I'm pretty radical, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, only because we believe passionately about what we do and what we say. Mm. So having said that, and we've, uh, uh, we've talked about the, uh, uh, the first book, Buried by the Church, mm. and you've explained uh, a bit about it. So. Before we go on to anything else, where can we obtain a copy of this? Well, it's on Amazon. It's available to order in bookshops. Um, and as far as I know, it's still online on the website, so people can get on there and, and, and get it from there. Um, we've still got a few copies left uh, on the current print run on that one, but it is available. So Amazon have still got it, and, right. and it's available to order through any, any decent bookshop. All these, uh, my friends, will be on the credits at the end of this programme. Also, I'm sure that Neil will bring a few copies along to the Mind, Body and Soul on the 9th of April. I will indeed. And so you'll have both books there, perhaps. So anyway, Mm -hmm. now let's go on to this new enterprise of yours. (laughs) Uh, The Little Book of Life After Life. Yes, yeah. The, the, I think let's, the, let's go for the little book first. Why have we got the little book? Because it's small. <laughs> <laughs> it's I asked for that, didn't I? <laughs> well, yeah, no. It's physically not very fat. It's not as thick as um, Buried by the Church. Right, okay. and, and I wanted to make it, again, simple to read, easy to read, and just contain the facts as I saw them. Right. Um, there is so much... Uh, you know, I look at these TV programmes that deal with ghostly encounters and, you know, ghost hunters and all this sort of thing, you know, and I think, oh my goodness, what are they doing? What are they doing? Why are they doing this? And I, of course, I very soon quickly realised, after I'd emailed and spoken to one or two people who produced these shows in America, that it's all about, uh, it's not about solving the situation, it's about uh, the shock, the horror, the, you know, the fear uh, factor which, which sells the TV programme. You know, if people are scared, in the house that sells the TV program, um, but I, I I was so amazed that they weren't dealing with it correctly. They weren't dealing, dealing with it from the point of view of what the spirit was after, why it was there, how it could be moved on, you know, in light and love. Not the last thing you need is a Catholic priest trying to confront it. You know, and if it is negative, you can't confront negativity with negativity. You have to confront yeah. negativity with love. Well, as we were talking earlier on, it's the spirit yeah. rescue. That, the spirit uh, rescue uh, is, is there, very yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. There's two abominations as far as I'm concerned. The Catholic priest, you know, I command you to go to hell. That's an abomination because it doesn't help anybody or anything. And the other one is the, the, the new phenomenon in the States, which is called the demonologist. Yeah. It will come to your house and rid your house of demons and there is no such thing. And I wish there was no such thing as demonologists either, because uh, they don't do any. They don't do any good, whatever. No, I think it's been sensationalised over the years. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it does not occur, because it does. Mm-hmm. There are spirits that are very lost. Very lost and very negative. Aren't yes. They? Aren't completely negative lives. Well, and and there are more things happening uh, in the media today, i.e., uh, the haunting programmes. Yeah, yeah, very much. To so. put things out there so people see and understand that this can happen. Mm. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it can be quite traumatic and frightening and terrorising for the people. And the amazing thing is that because of government legislation, on the front of every programme is this programme is for entertainment purposes. And yes. Because whatever you do, don't take it seriously. That's the government point of view, which of course ties in with the church and state idea. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately that uh, we live in a situation where it's political correctness and health and safety and we have to cover our own backs. Well, yes, that too. That uh, too. And there is that. But 
having put that aside here, okay, explain a bit about what's in, what's the material about? The little book of life, afterlife. And the afterlife bit is all one word, that's very important, because it's all about, in Bury by the Church, it's all about why we're here, and what we do, and what Jesus taught, and what he really taught, and what spirituality really teaches. And there was an awful lot of, um, you know, to and fro in that book, which is what I was trying to tell you all about dealing with various situations mm. in life. And, and uh, But this one, I just thought after watching all these TV programmes and talking to lots and lots of people and going to people's houses and people's properties with spirit rescue, as you call it, that's what we're very good name for it. Um, so many people still are unaware of what comes next what really, really, really does come next. Um, and there's a huge, well, a huge, huge for the size of the book, sex in the book, that deals with, you know, ghosts, hauntings, that sort of thing. And all the various types of negative spirits, there's the, um, I also explain in there, uh, poltergeists. There are two or three different types of poltergeists. There's a very interesting programme on TV, I don't know, the, the American one, where these, four or five guys go around who are always saying, hey dude, dude, dude. And they're going around to these various properties, hunting ghosts and, and trying to provoke them, which is a silly thing to do. Um, and he had this situation, I was watching it, where the proposed or proposed spirit actually called back to him in his name, called back to him his name, and that really scared him. That really scared him. But what that was, he was projecting his own energy yeah. And his own energy came back at him, but he was scared because he thought the ghost, whoever it was, knew his name, and he ran. Yeah. And and it's these people do these things, and it's it's ignorance to do it when you know. It is uh, because I do think that. But it's because, entertainment. Yeah, because we are <laughs> energies. Because we are energies. Of course. We need to understand about energies. We do. We Very need to understand so, yeah. how we can use our energies. Absolutely. Not just to help ourselves, but to help our others and the environment that is around mm. us. Yeah. That may seem a very brash statement, but. No, it's if, very true. If we think that true. everything is in energies, no matter what we do, we sit in this chair and the energy of the wood is there, mm -hmm. you know? We get up in the morning and the energy of our body is there, the essence of that body is there. And the people who were closest to that, that I've researched, and, and, and I feel affinity to because I've descended from them, is the Native American. Yeah, 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 uh, definitely. Very, very, I mean, they said, all is alive in energy, rocks, trees, plants. Yeah. And it's now come out, science have now discovered that the trees actually communicate with each other through the grass and the mosses between them. The, the energy communicates and they've actually proved that, that trees communicate with each other. So, But we do live in a thing. situation whereby uh, people um, have taken spirituality to uh, a different dimension altogether. Uh, like, uh, you know that I was with the, the North American Indians for a while, and mm -hmm. I lived with them for a while, walked with the grandmothers, etc, mm -hmm. etc. And I remember that uh, my friend would say to me, he said, uh, uh, virtually, uh, not the words he used, but what he meant is that uh, people who walk with head in crowds bump into trees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that sometimes we project ourselves into a, 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 a world of fantasy rather than sticking into the, uh, the things whereby that we are born from spirit, we'll go back to spirit. Absolutely. And what's in between, we have to do our best while we're here, but get on with other people. Yeah, and, it, and it's also a question too, I think, of teaching other people that we are all energy, that all the creatures of the planet, the trees, the plants, the rock, are our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We're, we're related to them. We're not here to control animals. We're not here to hunt foxes, you know, to chase them across the countryside so their lungs are fit to burst. We're not here to do that. We're here to look after them. We're here to love them. Um, and in the Bible, I'm constantly told, in the Bible it says we're given stewardship over the animals. And that means we can control them. I said, no, that means it's your job to look after them. Yeah. Um, very much so. And everybody, I mean, whoever's got a dog would know the unconditional love of a dog. I mean, it, we don't. We have trouble with that kind of love yeah. because 
you know, people can beat a dog and that dog will go straight back and offer love. You know, uh, that's not yeah. present in many humans. I mean, I've had it said to me, and I'm sure you have, that animals were put on this earth, like, uh, uh, the, not the domestic animals, but the animals uh, uh, that we farm, to eat, so that we can have it. And I always say, yes, they may be, that might be the case that you believe. But at the end of the day, it didn't say anything about feeding more steroids to make it yield quicker. So uh, we can do uh, you know, I mean, we can get onto the field of factory farming. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but, but horror dairies. Just, it's just it's look, just, just generically, as we're learning out there, uh, we'll be talking about animals. And, uh, like, but at the end of the day, then uh, we know that it's ourselves that have created a situation whereby that we don't really have a lot of respect for human life, let alone for animals here at this moment. The, the, the thing what you seem to be losing more and more in, in everyday life too, um, and this is in the work environment or any environment, is we seem to be losing empathy Yes. with each other, feelings for each other, the yeah. people we work with, people we know. Um, from bosses down, there seems to be no empathy. If, if, if you go to a company where the bosses have empathy with their workers, there's much more productivity. People work hard because they're happier and, you know, and their energy levels raise. Um, but there seems to be very little empathy now with people. But that, my friends, doesn't mean to say that you take fools lightly either. No. Um, I'm a firm believer that you're here to help everybody. Yes. Help them when you can. You know, offer them guidance when you yeah. can. Um, because there, but for the grace of the Spirit, go I. You know, uh, I could absolutely be like yes. Um, I quite agree, uh, but there are certain people in life that are givers, and certain people that in life that are takers. Yes, and that is their life to lead. It is. You must try and guide them the best we can. It, but it, when they start to encroach on a situation, we do our best to uh, steer them on the right road. Sometimes yes. it's a case of uh, uh, I want what you have and I'll jump over you to get what I want, Jack. Yes, and, and try and steer them, as you say, the right road. Um, but it depends on the individual situation whether yes, you would fight back true. and retain no, it for yourself or whether you let them have it. I mean, I, 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 the situation is too vague to, yes. to comment on how yes. you should act. But I yeah. always say follow your heart. I, I, I do. I'm, there are lots of vulnerable people in this life here. And sometimes that uh, uh, it's a case of that because we are vulnerable, we take, get taken advantage of a situation here. And uh, we just must help as we're going along for everybody, no matter who they are. Uh, age, gender, um, religious... Uh, Defection, whatever there is, we must help everybody, mm. and that's why uh, our centres need to be set up more and more, so people can sit down and talk, no matter what gender, religious, uh, or colour, it makes no difference at all. So we can all sit down together. Anyway, having said that, here, yeah. so this little book here we've got here, is it a little well, book? Don't worry, <laughs> this, this little book is a case that we can slip it in our pockets and carry it. No, back. it's. I uh, was oh, good. At try and get it published with the same publisher I was using before, I used with uh, Buried by the Church. Right. And I thought, do you know what? Let's not get it published. Let's not fight all that again. Let's put it available free download. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do, it's going to be available on the website for everybody to download for free. Because it's only about, I don't know, 70, 80 pages. So you can download it and keep it as a file on your computer or you can print it out. Um, but it's, it is the little book of life after life, in other words, after this life, what yes. happens next? Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a natural uh, progression from buried by the church, which is yeah. the facts. Um, but it very soon became apparent to me when buried by the church was out that I hadn't dealt with the next bit, uh, and so I thought, well, I just had to do that, and then that's it. I'm not going to do anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, I do understand that, and I'm sure the viewers uh, when looking at this, where they do. Uh, um, download this and we'll find out when you can do this, how you can do this later on. Uh, everything will go on the end of the credits, remember, but we will talk about this in depth a bit more mm -hmm. uh, while we're here. But remember that uh, everybody's uh, thought of the afterlife 
may be different. But the place is the same. There is an afterlife after we leave here. We are not just on this earth to have children and move on. We are here to do the best we can, joining with others along the way, to help them along their paths. You may know a lot about uh, uh, soul mates or soul groups, and let's talk about the soul groups for a minute, because they are the people that we meet along our path. We might meet them for five minutes, they might stay in there, in our lives for two or three years, but they're meant to be, and they help us as much as we help them. So anyway, okay, so we've got this little book of Life After Life, okay, and we can download it as, as we're going along. You yeah. can download it, it'll be available on the website from April, I think it's about the time you start your... You yes, your yeah, 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 that's nicely linked into that, yeah, yeah, very good, yeah, but nicely linked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, it'll be available to download, it's free, it's PDF, uh, it's still copyright, right. we still have a copyright notice on it. Um, but what I do want people to do is download it, keep it, refer to it, you know, and just yeah. hopefully it will put people's minds at rest that there is no such place as hell. I think that's the main yeah. thing, and put their minds, uh, minds at rest, but not just uh, no such place as what you've said, but also that there is a continuation yeah. of, uh, and no matter what you do in this life, you will go to another life here. There are a lot of interpretations about people saying, well, if you're nasty, you'll go to a different level. But that's something for later on here, for you to find out yourselves. But remember that we all have thoughts, we all have consciences, little voices, we all have guides, if you like, call them what you like. We all have this in our minds that someone is speaking to us. Not controlling us, speaking to us best way to think about this is through our conscience. There are no rights and wrongs, just listen to yourself. Then you'll progress as you go along and as you progress you'll find out, you'll research and you'll start to move forward in your spiritual life. So before we wrap anything up here, uh, uh, Neil, what I will say to you is that, uh, um, is there anything else in the future do you think? Um, Book-wise, I mean. Well, I, I can't say anything at this time, <laughs> but uh, the one thing I w did want to mention actually about the book is that I do deal with karma. And I see on websites, Facebook pages, and all sorts of things like that, people talk about karma. And if there's somebody who does something particularly nasty, they always say, karma will get yes, him. Yes, I know. <laughs> karma will get him, karma will sort him out. Karma will not. That's not what karma is all about. No. Um, and it's all about... There was uh, I, I did one instance I give is a murderer. If someone murders someone, you know, and they say he'll get his, that's not the case at all. All it means is it, it if somebody kills him, that just shifts the negative karma onto somebody else. Karma is all about making it right with him. He has to learn the lesson. So his lesson in his next life might be that he works for that person and his family entirely, you know, to put it right. Karma is not about vengeance, and it never, never will be. No. Now that's quite a hard lesson for people to uh, understand, especially if uh, we're talking about children here. Yeah, but it's about making that person a better, uh, that spirit. I do, I understand what you're saying. Improving them and, and, and making them realise and, and, and taking that but negativity away. I'm trying to explain generically to the people who are watching this, uh, um, mm. They might, have been, uh, they might be going through a dramatic situation of something happened here and it's very hard to see at this point. So just take it in on board at the moment, put it to one side and then when you feel better or when you're in a different place then you can start looking at things and researching things. Because you know yourself that a grieving process is needed to be whatever happens to uh, in our lives but we need to forgive, because when we forgive, that grieving process is like coming to a closure. We never forget. We never forget about a situation, a um, traumatic situation. But we can forgive, and if we forgive, it, that grieving process comes to just a closure. 
So I don't think, I think we've covered everything here at the moment here. Yep. I was trying to uh, get you to say that we're going to have another book come along uh, another time, <laughs> but we didn't get to that point. So, before we close, let me just say to you that uh, uh, Neil did mention about the 9th of April. And the 9th, of, bring that up? I'm sorry, I didn't and the 9th <laughs> of April will be our mind, body and spirit, the first one, all my ones after mundane things like uh, expenses, advertising, etc., halls, etc., who come out, all go to my sanctuary, which money goes there, which after that will go towards checks, which I shall give out. So, but Neil will be there on the 9th. He will have his Buried by the Church I book will. there. Yes. That's his first book, as we've talked about. And he'll have all the information and maybe a copy of the download that you can see and then you can uh, get the download yourself. So for now, I say thank you very much, Neil. Thanks very much. And it's a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much, Michael.